Hello, everybody. How are we all doing? Having a good day? I'm Larry Scogan, and it's my good fortune to be the president of Bismarck State College, and I've got a very, very short part of the program tonight, and that is just to welcome you to our campus and uh, to share just a couple of thoughts with you as you embark on your educational experience here at Bismarck State College. To begin with, on behalf of all of the employees, I welcome you and I thank you for electing to come to Bismarck State College to pursue your beyond, whatever that is. And we know that you're started on a path now and you might change your mind as you're going through that path, but you are in the most exciting time of your life right now, and that is when you get to explore intellectually what's out there, what, what, you, what you want to do with the rest of your life, and, uh, and we just feel very honored that you selected Bismarck State College to do that, to come here, to explore academically, to challenge yourself, uh, and we're just delighted to be part of that whole process. So that's my first point. The second point I want to make is that as you're going through this process, there are going to be some tough times. And when you approach those tough times, I hope you will remember uh, what I'm going to tell you now. Um, uh, Ford, Henry Ford, that started the Ford Motor Company, he had a saying, and it went like this. And you have to listen to it carefully because it's got a nuance to it. He said, if you think you can, or you think you can't, you're right. And so when you hit those times while well, you're going through your educational experience that are tough times, and you think you can make it through, you're going to make it through. If you hit those tough times and say, I can't do it anymore, I'm not going to make it, you're going to be right, because it really is a matter of thinking positively and working your way through whatever issue, and they're going to spend a lot of time talking about this. We have wonderful support services here for you. So when you hit those hard times, please use us. Please come to us, ask for help, and we'll get you through it. And know, and this is what they're going to talk about, I'm not stealing their thunder, but everybody's going through that. Everybody's going to have challenging times. So you're in the most exciting time of your life, and we're delighted to be part of that. And when you meet challenges along the way, remember you can do it. Everybody's going through the same process. We've got a lot of resources to help you. We want you to be successful. We want you to come to Bismarck State College and reach your beyond, whatever that is. And now I'm going to turn over to the people that are really going to do the orientation, Donna and Dan. Thanks, Dr. Stubbins. Thanks, Larry. Well, welcome to our five o'clock orientation, and it's wow, welcome BSC students. Um, delighted to see you out here, and I want to say a, a special welcome and thank you to those of you who brought some family members with, um, parents or other family members, um, to support you through um, as you start um, your education here at the college. My name is Donna Fishbeck, and I'm the Associate Vice President for Student Affairs here at the college. My co-presenter and colleague, I'll let him introduce himself. Good afternoon. I'm Dan Leingay, and I'm the Dean of Academics here at Bismarck State. And I've been here uh, at the college for about uh, 16, 17 years, and uh, have taught um, for most of that time, um, most recently as one of the math faculty, uh, and so I was one of those scary math teachers. So. Um, now I'm the scary dean, and uh, we're very excited to have you here today and actually to go through some of the things that we want to talk through um, to provide the success uh, structure for you while you're here at Bismarck State College. And so you're here for orientation, and orientation really the purpose is to transition you into um, college or Bismarck State. And so here's what we're hoping you take out of this tonight. One, Dan and I and the rest of us who work here at Bismarck State want you to be successful. And one way to be successful is know what to expect your first semester here, your first year here. And so we're going to talk for your first hour tonight about the hero's journey. And the other thing we want you to get out of orientation is uh, there's a lot of information for you that you've been given ahead of time or here today. So you do have a folder. We're going to highlight 
um, what we think is most important to highlight for you to remember and again, to help you have a positive experience here. And then finally, the other thing we want um, you to do tonight, and that's probably gonna be more on the second half of our program, is to be able to meet um, some of your fellow um, BSc students. And so with that, Dan, I'm gonna just, I think, go into uh, quickly some of our housekeeping businesses. Um, we're here for about the next two, two and a half hours, and, and we're gonna cover a lot, so we did not um, build in a break. If you do need to use the restrooms, you know, please feel free to go up there out on each side of the exits here. And if it, it's getting long for you and you need to stretch the, your legs, please feel free to stand up in the back of the room as we do that. Um, I guess the other thing I just want you to pull out, you got a packet when you came in. We're gonna refer to this so you can just pull this out. And since we're gonna be talking about the hero's journey, I just would like you to pull that out. Because we'd like you to take notes on it. Get your pen. Okay, so with that, Dan. Yep, take some notes and um, you'll have an opportunity a little bit later. Uh, we'll give you some more information where you'll definitely want to write down some phone numbers. And so, um, you know, as we start this process, uh, you know, it's only fitting from the very front end to start talking about the end of your journey at BSC. And that would be uh, most likely with the completion of a degree. Now, for some of you, you might be graduating next year in 2016, if you have a one-year program. It might be the next year after that, 2017, or even 2018, depending on the structure of your degree plan. And so what we want to do is ensure that you have the support structure and you understand how to find um, the support that you need along the journey. So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about what we've defined as the hero's journey. Now, the hero's journey is, is a uh, model of storytelling. It's, it's a classic uh, story. Um, a lot of our current stories, a lot of our pop culture, our, our movies, you know, many of the superhero movies that have been out uh, really uh, recently, they follow this sort of structure. And this idea of the uh, hero's journey was proposed by uh, a scholar named Joseph Campbell. And he, was, he, f he followed the idea of the monomyth Basically, that there's this one underlying story that's told over and over and over again. Now, what we have seen in, um, in this sort of journey is that there's a hero that goes out and does great deeds for others. Okay? And what we want to do is put you into the role of the hero. That's what we want you to think about as we talk about this process in your time here at Bismarck State. We're going to talk about the semester, the fall semester generally, but it's going to be applied to uh, the next semester. You can apply it to the entire time at BSC or your entire time in higher ed. Um, it's the same process. And what we want to do is sort of give you what that roadmap looks like. We're going to connect it to the storylines story that you're very familiar with so that when you're in the middle of it, um, you're going to know what the next step is or what the next stage is. And that's going to help you get through the process. And that's, that's our idea with this. Um, Willa Cather is a, uh, one of my favorite authors, and she really highlighted this um, clearly and said, you know, really there's only two or three stories. And what's really interesting is that every time that story is told, it's like amazing. It's like, I can't believe someone wrote that. It just, it, it hit me. I understood it. And then, you know, a generation later, someone wrote the same story, but it's amazing and how it keeps cycling over and over and over again. So that's where Joseph Campbell said, you know what, there's more to this. There's a natural storytelling um, that, that works really well. And then also, when you start looking deeper, you can apply it to other settings. And so for us, in, in this idea of hero's journey, um, Dr. Eidolin Carr she proposed that this, this hero's journey really fits well for students in higher ed. And so the, the, the travels that you have as a student, this follows the same pattern. And so you have Iron Man in a movie doing what Iron Man does best, blowing up stuff and, and everything. And you have a freshman in college. When you, look at, when you really look at it, it's the same story all the way through. Well, think about that, right? And so with this being said, what we've done is we've taken this hero's journey and even condensed it a little bit further. Typically, there are 12 stages. 
We've reduced this to the six stages that you see in your handout and that what you see on the slide. So there's the first stage of accepting the challenge. Then there's the uh, idea of crossing the threshold. Third, you have the understanding of the new environment, followed by facing the challenge. And then you have the wall, sort of that, that time in the semester when it just really gets serious. And then hopefully there's the victory stage. So also notice this, this broken down between the ordinary and the special world. That's to signify the ordinary world is where you are coming from now and soon stepping into BSC world, the special world. Um, you've heard it said many times that higher ed is sort of, you know, uh, this sort of, it's not the real world. And when you leave college, you go to the real world. There's, there's something subtle there, but yet it does ring true for a lot of things. The ordinary world, there are certain rules that are in play. There are certain ways that you've done um, things up to this point. Those of you that are coming directly from high school, there was a process you followed as a high school student, and there's a, a norm that's been built. Now, when you cross over into college, those rules may not apply anymore. They may be different. And if you rely on what you knew before and try to apply it to the new now, you could have some difficulties. And so what we're attempting to do is to take a look at this whole process and then tr um, translate it into something that rings for you, this hero's journey idea. Okay, so I'm going to have you set up the first thing. Right? So what we're going to do is we're going to talk about this, and again, I want you to be thinking about yourself in the role of a hero. And the first stage is accepting the challenge. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at a, uh, a clip from a movie where the hero, the unlikely hero, comes forward and really takes on a challenge. So let's take a look. Welcome! Happy Hunger Games! May the odds be ever in your favor. Now, the time has come for us to select one courageous young man and woman. Primrose Everdeen. Prim! I volunteer as tribute. I believe we have a volunteer. Uh, no, Emily. No! No! All right, so Hunger Games, I'm always hesitant to use that as sort of a metaphor for college. Just the way the story plays out, and I'm he I'll put that out there right away. But, um, so the hero here, what, what's her name? Katniss, right? So Katniss steps forward. Certainly she did not set out to, to go on this journey, uh, but she was put forward into this role, and now the journey from that point moved forward. Um, your accepting of the challenge probably wasn't as dramatic as that, I hope not. Um, may the odds be ever in your favor. I mean, that's, see, we're just a little hesitant on that. But the idea is sound. You know, internally at this stage, and again, we're right before immersing into BSC culture here. You're still at that front end stage, um, you're, internally, you should be aware of a problem. You know, there's a need. And of course, you're here today. You're, you're pursuing a degree in higher education. So you saw a problem or a need. Um, that change that's out there, everyone deals with change slightly different, in a slightly different way, but there is a fear associated with that. And so acknowledging all of that up front, that's the part of the process that you're kind of at right now. And so parents uh, and loved ones that are here, you know, you have your hero sitting beside you, perhaps. They're moving on in a different uh, journey. And what we want to do is provide and give you the information about the support. The real big thing is that BSC is here to support you. And when we do our programming, not only within the classroom, but also outside of the classroom, understand that it's very directed at that process. So I want to walk you through right now some of the things that you've done in this first phase of accepting the challenge. So obviously you've applied here at Bismarck State, got your, your paperwork in. Some of you actually took a tour, came up and visited with admission counselors and took a tour. Um, yesterday I was here on campus on move-in day. Some of you, through this process of accepting the challenge, you moved into our residence halls. Others of you are getting your housing um, plans um, settled off campus, if that's the case. Um, and there's a number of other things. You're getting your books. Um, and you maybe did a placement test for what course to take. Many of you were in here earlier this summer in this room um, meeting with your advisor, registering for class. 
those are some of the things that you've done in this phase. And I just want to take, uh, I guess, a couple, two, three minutes and highlight some of the other things that as we go into crossing the threshold, you're going to want to take care of. Um, you want to get these done on your checklist because as you cross that threshold, which for many of you is going to be tomorrow is our first day classes. Um, tonight is our evening class to start. But here's the checklist that I want you guys to focus on because we want you to be engaged and participate in your classes and not worry about this other stuff. So on the screen, we have our financial aid office staff. They are over in Schaefer Hall. We also have a number of other offices over there like student finance, our academic records, our IT and our help desk. And we know you've been working um, with the FAFSA, many of you, and with these offices to have your game plan of how to finance um, your coming to Bismarck State. We know it's expensive. And so we want you to um, work with these folks and uh, take care of that um, this week. And so how might you do that if you haven't already done that? We'll go to the next slide, Dan. Um, we want you to get onto Campus Connection. Now, Campus Connection should be, shouldn't be a new term to you. Campus Connection is where you get on to register for classes. You're going to see your grades there. If you want to know um, who your advisor is, you go on to that program. We're encouraging you to go to your student center, student finance, and you're going to see what your um, anticipated bill is. You also at that same site, and you don't see this, but you can get on here, you're going to know what your anticipated aid is. And so where those don't match up, where it, um, you're going to want to go and take care of that. Your aid's going to be posted to your account on September 10th. Now, we know these are where most of the questions are for moms and dads and for you. And so we have our folks from financial aid and our student finance office here tonight um, so when we're done here at the end of the session, the entire session, they'll just be out here in a room. They want to answer any questions you have. Um, so that's one of the things that you can, you can do the checklist for here and then focus on getting into classes. So what else do we want to take care of? Um, want to just highlight um, our dates and deadlines. Every college publishes these. And in your folder, you have a larger list of those. I'm just recommending that you pay attention to those um, in the next couple of weeks because you're, some of you may be adding some classes and dropping some classes. And um, pay particular attention to the dates because it will impact whether or not you get um, refunds or 100% tuition um, back according to those dates. And again, if you have questions, we're here to answer those if, if, if you're in that situation close to a date with adding or dropping a course. Okay, BSC Bookstore, how many of you have your books? Hi, raise a hand. Okay, so we've got about one third of you. You're gonna want to take care of this this week. Um, when you go into the bookstore, it's over in the student union on the upper level. You are gonna need a copy of your class schedule. So um, if you don't have it with you or you forget, you can go down to the Mac. And they'll help you print that out. But get your books. You don't want to attend class for two, three weeks and not have your books. That's not how you want to start your semester out. So you want to go and do that. The other thing that you want to do, we'll click the next slide. Um, while you're over in the student union, if you haven't done that, you're going to need to go and get your Mystic ID card. And the ID card is the one that's left to you. Um, you're going to have your picture on there. You are going to have your name, and then in the front, there's a barcode. And in the back, then, of the card, if you turn it around, you're going to have your student ID. All of you have a student ID, and that's how we identify you. It's just like your social security number yeah. for us. But how many of you number. have your card already? Okay, yeah. so that's great. And you can go ahead and get that tomorrow as well if you haven't. Uh, stop in at the book, or <laughs> right by the bookstore, and they'll take that picture. Right, and it's at the... Um, Information Center. Now, what do we? Why is this card important to have? It, it serves um, a variety of purposes. One, it's the card um, if you need to go to our Learning Commons, which is our library. library, aka our library. 
that's your library card. It's also for those of you living on campus and um, if, if you've been, if you want to eat, this is the card that um, you scan through for our food service. Yep. Those of you off campus, if you want to upload any dollars or if mom and dad want to upload any for you, if you want to stop by Mystic Java, that's the card you put it on. Now, in addition, um, you know, we've got the wellness center and the aquatic center on campus. Um, you're going to need your student ID to get in there. Um, you're also going to be asked to show your student ID for any activities uh, on campus, whether it's a play, an athletic event. Mm -hmm. Many of them are going to be free to you, but you have to show your ID. So take care of that. Let's not wait until next week. Um, they're waiting for you this week, and um, the line shouldn't be too bad. It, it's a quick process. Right. And I think you know just some of the services in town that provide student discounts, this will be that avenue for you to verify that you are a student here at the college. So um, take advantage of it. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of time, and, and your picture most likely will not look like that. So it'll, it'll be different for you. Okay. So. Um, I don't want, now let's not confuse the Mystic ID card with the BSC Beyond card. And all of you earlier this year, prior to coming here, should have gotten something in the mail in this big, bright green envelope. Um, and that was our BSC Beyond card. And as you look at it, you can see um, it's a debit or type of credit card. And it's an option for you to use if you need to get a credit from us or if you want to receive your excess financial aid, that's one means of when you can, can use that to get, get it. It will automatically go on there if you so choose, or it could be put in your account. But, so that's your option to use that. Student Finance, who is here, if you have questions on that, um, they're here to answer that for you. Okay, what else do we have? Okay, um, we have Think About It program, and I'm hoping, um, at least half of you or more are going to know what I'm talking about when I say think about it. When you were here this summer, your advisor probably introduced you to this. This is in your folder, and I want you to take that out. We have a think about a program. How many of you, and be honest, this is the first time you're hearing about think about it? Okay. Um, so think about it is a course that we are requiring all new students to take. Um, it's a course about, um, and it's gonna, a course that's gonna help you as you um, cross the threshold into our special world at BSC. We want you to understand the types of social situations that you're gonna encounter. We want to provide a safe environment for you and to know what to expect so you can make um, good choices. Probably, course is probably not the right term. It's more yeah. of a training. It's a training. Yeah, a training, yeah. an online training session for you to pursue okay. and, and you. And it's two and a half hours. And you have until the middle of September, so you have time to take um, this training. And so we're going to encourage you to do that. And so the information is on here. Now, for those of you who haven't heard about this, um, or those of you who have, we invite you um, to this class through your BSC email. And so I want to talk about email for a second. All of you have a bismarckstate.edu account. And that really is BSC's official means to communicate with you. And so if you go out there, if you're a new student, um, you've been invited to take the course and you can just um, log in from here and go to the site. So make sure if you haven't claimed your account, that's kind of our terms, when you were here for registration, make sure you get your email account. Get a program to your phones so that you, you know what's happening. You're going to get emails. You're going to get emails from your faculty. You're going to get emails um, through that account, through the registrar's office, and through a lot of other offices. And you're going to miss something really important if you're not checking it. So again, I can't emphasize enough. Get to your BSC email account and take a look at it weekly. Okay, Dan, I think we're ready to go into our next Yeah, I think stage. just, you know, a couple of quick takeaways, you know, if you write it as a to-do on your, on your notes, you know, about this, um, um, the uh, Think, about, think it. about It program. Also, the email thing, uh, very critical. As you start the class and you start receiving communications, our online classes began today, uh, today last night. 
And so uh, most likely the faculty has sent out a email from that course. Um, you do need to have that up and running. So that's a very critical, important first step. Um, know that schedule, get the class schedule. Um, you'll have an opportunity. Uh, the buildings will still be open after this session. So you know, we encourage you to take a look around the facilities just to get a sense of where the rooms are. Um, that'll help alleviate some of the stress and anxiety uh, tomorrow and Wednesday. And then the textbooks, just get, get ready. You may um, receive uh, some more information from your uh, faculty, uh, from your courses regarding books, but for the most part, your printout of your schedule should be able to uh, allow you to get you in. So, you know, when I watched the uh, Hunger Games and I saw Katniss step forward, you know, I, I knew she was gonna be okay. Okay, you know, maybe that's a spoiler alert, so sorry if you didn't see the movie, but. You know, she'll make it because I, I'm sure she had her email set before she volunteered, and, and I'm sure she had her textbooks and everything, so it was all good, right? So follow Katniss, and you'll be successful in that way. So now we're at the stage where we're going to talk about crossing the threshold, the next stage in the journey, and this is the uh, bridging between your old world and the new world of BSC, and so that's really where you're at today, tomorrow, into the next two weeks. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at a clip where um, a hero from this journey actually crosses into the next part of his journey. Sorry about that. Boy, I haven't seen you since you was a baby, Harry. I've got something for you. Dear Mr. Potter, we are pleased to inform you that you have been accepted at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Towards the point schedule. Let's be off. So he thought about it and then he went through the door, right? He, he moved from the old world to the new. And actually that movie probably is a good way to model what your experience will be at BSC, minus the wizards, minus the, all the goblin stuff and everything like that. But with that being said, you know, your, your transition perhaps wasn't as dramatic. Um, your documents that you received from BSC probably didn't have the scripted calligraphy writing, but it's very similar in terms of that moving from the old world to the new world. And so for us in this stage, as you cross over, you know, internally there's a lot going on. You should be thinking, you know, how do you overcome that fear of change? Change is a, a very real element, and how you navigate that change is, is as important as what the change is. So overcoming that change and, and really committing to the transition that you're about to take, um, exploring the new world, um, you know, our campus, there's a lot going on here, a lot of changes, and you're going to see some, um, one of our buildings be uh, dismantled over the next few weeks. So there's a lot going on in this campus as you explore, you're going to see some of that change. And so for you at this point, in the first two weeks, you know, the critical items that are out there, you know, number one, you're going to start attending class, and you're going to get to meet your faculty members, and you're going to get the information like the syllabus. Syllabus is going to have the rules of the class and what the expectations are. Remember, the old world, how you navigated your coursework previously, we're expecting a lot more at the college level. Um, you're going to be asked to be engaged within that classroom environment. We want you to participate. You're going to be bonding with other people. The one thing that's a big change is, you know, if you're at a, um, a school district, you probably knew your classmates all the way from kindergarten, first grade, all the way through. When you get to college, you're not going to know everyone in that room. And that environment is a little bit different, so it's really important for us as faculty to create an environment where you feel included and you get to know other people. And so that's a big part of the front part of the semester. We do a lot in that classroom environment to, uh, to bring this forward. We also do a lot of programming on campus to facilitate that, that uh, experience of, of being grounded into the BSC world. So when I was an undergraduate... Let me just, let me just sure. piggyback on that quick. Just to put it into context for you, this phase here is probably the first week, first and second, second and a half week. So a week to about two weeks is our crossing the threshold, right? About yep. one to two mm -hmm. weeks, if you were to write that down. Yep, exactly. 
Okay. And some of the things that we do are, you know, very critical in terms, we're very uh, specific about why we do it at this time. Now, orientation is one of those items. Uh, this program, it, the main goal of this orientation program is to give you a sense of what the new world, uh, the BSC expectations are, and how do you transition into this new environment. What are your uh, strengths that you bring to the table? What can we help you with? Um, and all of that's part of the process. Now, when I was in your shoes as a 17, 18 year old, uh, the school I went to, we had an orientation, we did the same sort of work, um, and it was very important for us to be connected together. And so at my school, get ready for this, you're gonna see some GQ action here. My school, we got to wear these wonderful beanies they're not hats, they're beanies, and they're always in fashion, by the way. And I promise BSC will not have you wear beanies. We don't have beanies here, but this is what we use, and so it was a way to sort of bind um, all the new students together. Um, you know, you stand out when you see this, so it's very obvious that you're a brand new student and you get to connect with others, especially when you're 6'5", like me, and you, you know, you kind of already are kind of scary, so... It's a way to connect and build uh, new partnerships and friendships. And we're going to talk about the importance of you connecting to Bismarck State, but I, for Dan, um, he went to Concordia, and Concordia, is a, he's a cobber, it's in Minnesota. And I went to college about the same time as he did, I think a little bit earlier, but I was just a couple blocks from his college. I went to University of Minnesota at Moorhead, and we're a dragon. Okay, dragons, uh, cobble corn. Okay, but hey, what... I, I, that doesn't sound... It but, sounds a little dismissive. But um, what we did, again, we had orientation too, and the point we're trying to make, there are going to be opportunities for you to connect with your community, connect with Bismarck State. How do we connect at Moorhead? We went to orientations, and we gathered together, and we went across, and we actually stole these from these guys um, and kept them, um, th and that's how we bonded. Um, how you're going to bond, we're going to move into, I'll oh, keep it. I didn't get one back then. I'll keep I didn't one lose here. one back then either. So. Yeah. But, That's an antique, by the way. So how do you bond? I know, we'll keep it here. Um, <laughs> how do you bond? We'll go into the, the next one. We have an extension of today. And we do this intentionally so that you can bond. Um, and become familiar not only with your fellow students, but with faculty and staff. So we have Welcome Week. And that was actually kicked off today. Um, the specific agenda is going to be in your packet. And so go out and meet our faculty at a cookout or we have a hypnotist. This is your time to get out of your shell. And so we're encouraging you to take advantage of these opportunities. They're, they're there for a reason. Free t-shirts, free food. I mean, that's kind of good stuff, right? I mean, that's good stuff. Okay. So other ways to get involved on campus. I just want to mention to you, we have a department called Residence Life and Student Life um, that their main goal for our student life is to program activities for you. And so we have things going on. And so you can um, join student government. We have a number of clubs and organizations. And our clubs and organizations really are affiliated with what your majors are. And as I went around prior to the session here, I met some of you. Um, there's Surge Tech, um, Mass Communication, Nursing, Power Plant. Get engaged in that, if, if that's something that, that, that's your niche. Um, if it's not, there are other things. There's intramurals, um, there's the game room over there to get involved. Um, some of you are athletes, that's, what, that, that's gonna be your connection to some of your fellow classmates. So take advantage of that. Because we do know, I've been in higher ed. Dan had mentioned he's been for about, what, 16 years. I've been in higher ed for 27 years. I've worked with freshmen. I know successful students. It's not a secret, folks. You need to be engaged on the campus and in the classroom. And I know you work, and I know you have other lives besides here, but it makes the difference. And so for those of you off campus, I'm going to challenge you. I mean, go out of your way to get on campus this first month and get comfortable with um, knowing who the faculty are, knowing who the, the staff and the offices are. Yeah, definitely, and if you're, live, like you said, off campus, it, it doesn't pay to come to class at uh, nine o'clock, go home, come back two hours later, uh, go to class, 
go home, and then come back again. We have a lot of places on campus where you can um, hunker down, you can work. Um, like I said, you can sit in the food court area. You could also sit within uh, by the coffee bar. There's a lot of places to sort of engage in the BSC community. So before we move into the next stage, we want to talk about Benji. Benji, uh, this video is a uh, glimpse into what not to do. So keep that in mind. Early two weeks of class, Benji, don't be Benji. Now, fashion-wise, you might think that as well, but don't be Benji. This is the story of Benji. Benji was fresh out of high school and looking forward to college so he could be independent. He loved his mom, but mom was always hovering. She made sure he ate his vegetables and got up in the morning and then reminded him to make his bed. Most importantly, she made sure he finished his homework before he played his video games. Benji had heard stories about college from his mom. Benji just knew that as a college student, he could do whatever he wanted. No one would tell him what to wear or what to eat, and he would only have to go to class or do homework when he felt like it. Finally, the big day arrived. Benji's mom helped him move into his residence hall purchased books at the bookstore, kissed him on the cheek, waved goodbye, and drove away. As he stood there waving, he realized his dream had finally come true. He was free. On his first day of college, Benji slept in until three o'clock. He refused to make his bed, ate a whole pizza for lunch, and entered a 24-hour video game tournament as a battle orc. He shot some pool in the student union, ate Doritos with Easy Cheese, did some square washing, consumed way too much soda, took a nap under a tree, and did everything but go to class. After two weeks of doing whatever he wanted, Benji decided it was time to get serious about college. He went to his first class, English 110. The professor rattled off the names of all the students during roll call except for his. Perplexed, he raised his hand and asked, is my name on the list? The professor paused and said, no, speak to me after class. At the end of class, the professor sat down with Benji and said, you may be administratively withdrawn for non-attendance. Why didn't anybody notify me? Did you read the email I sent you? Benji scoffed, email? Who uses email anymore? Did it come through my Facebook account? No, it would have come through your bismarckstate.edu account the official form of communication at BSC. Benji was dismayed. He had been told about BSC email during his registration session, but did not think it was important to activate his account. Annoyed, Benji decided to go to his next class, Math 103. When the class ended, the professor said, excuse me, who are you? Benji said his name and the instructor said, oh, I withdrew you from the class last week for non-attendance. Why didn't you call me or text me? I did call you and I left a message. It said to call me back immediately to discuss your status in this class. Did you get my message? No. I don't check my voicemail. Confused about what was happening to him, Benji asked the professor, what do I do now? The professor stated, I think it's time you visited the Mystic Advising and Counseling Center to talk about your predicament. The MAC is located in the lower level of the student union next to the bookstore. They are your best option at this point. Benji needed help and headed to the MAC for guidance. At the MAC, he was greeted by a wise advisor who explained to him what happened to students who were administratively withdrawn. Benji found out that he had been withdrawn from all of his classes for non-attendance. He asked the advisor, can I be added back into those classes? I'm ready to go to school now. The advisor said, no, you will not be able to register or attend these classes until spring semester. Benji was alarmed. What happens now? Can I still live in the residence halls? Will I still get my scholarship? Will I be able to return my books? The advisor said, Unfortunately, you will have 48 hours to move out of the residence hall. Your scholarship will be revoked and you will not be able to return your books.
because the final day to return them for a full refund was seven business days from the first full day of classes. Oh, by the way, you will also be disqualified from federal financial aid because you did not meet the satisfactory academic progress requirements, also known as SAP. Benji did feel like a SAP. His dreams were shattered and he was forced to pack his bags and return home after spending only a few weeks at college. His mom was not happy. Eventually, Benji returned to college and made a decision to attend class, manage his time effectively, and get good grades. He graduated with an associate degree and continued on to a bachelor's degree program. Although it is true that all's well that ends well, Benji regretted the extra time and money it cost him to finish his college education. If he could give one piece of advice to new students, it would be to take college seriously from the very first day. If you need help at BSC, reach out. Benji, Benji, Benji. Might seem a little dramatic, perhaps over the top, but it's very real. We see this happen every semester. And so um, we're here right now just to say, steer away from that. Um, it's just, it does cause a lot of speed bumps in your journey and you just don't need to do that. You know, our faculty wants you to be engaged and, and you have to be in the class to do that. And so get out there, uh, stay on top. Um, it, one of the things it's really important at this stage to be your own advocate. Uh, you're not necessarily gonna have someone else doing this work for you. Um, be out there, stay on top of things and, and you be your own um, uh, drive to go through that. And again, the big thing here is that the, the process that you had in place prior to arrival at college may not work in college. And so understand that there are some changes and differences. And, and if you know that up front, um, you can get yourself set in the right direction right away. And I think if Benji would have known more of um, or understood his environment, that probably wouldn't have been the situation. Exactly. And that's really the next stage is to understand this new environment that we call you know, higher education and, and BSC. And a big part of that is, is building a support structure around you. So we're gonna take a look at our next clip where um, the hero of this story is actually building his support team uh, to help him on his journey. Oh, You're late. A wizard is never late, Frodo Baggins. <laughs> Confound it all, Samwise! Please, Mr. Gandalf, sir, don't hurt me. No, I've thought of a better use for you. Come along, Samwise. Keep up. Frodo! I thought I'd lost you. Frodo! I see you. Uh. Uh. Are, you are you frightened? Yes. Not nearly frightened enough. I know what hunts you. You can no longer wait for the wizard, Frodo. They're coming. So another classic story that you know, uses the hero's journey, Tolkien used this, and of course, as you know, this uh, movie, do you remember what the name of the movie is, the first one? <coughs> Excellent, Fellowship of the Ring, building that fellowship, building the support structure, and that's exactly what Frodo was doing as he moved forward. So you have your own support structure. They may not be uh, hobbits with furry feet, or, or maybe you do have friends with furry feet, uh, they might not be the next king of the world, right, the whole world, but you have your own strength and your own, your own partners with this. And, and really at this stage, you know, internally, you're, you're really engaging into this new world, and that's an important step for you. Also, you have experience in this new environment, and so you, you're, you're building confidence. And so we're talking weeks three through about week seven of the semester. So you're getting into this new environment and you're, you're starting to develop the friends. Mm -hmm. um, it's important, all of you probably have your own set of social friends, but what you need to do now is to build a whole new set of academic friends. Um, those that can be with you as you go through this BSC um, community. And so it might be um, getting to know the community itself, not only the local college community, but BSC proper, or I'm sorry, Bismarck and Mandan proper. Um, if you're not from this area, getting to know that um, um, area. 
At the college, we do specific things to help with this process. So we already talked about the classroom. You're already working with your faculty. You're starting to do tests early on in the semester. And one of the things that we do as an institution is we have what's called an early alert program, where at about week five and six, your faculty, if you're enrolled in the 16-week class, they're going to enter your grades at that point in the semester. Now, you'll be able to see where that is. Um, you most likely will already know where your grades are. But what we'll do as an institution is take a look at that. And if there are students that are in need of some special intervention, we're going to reach out and, and do that. And so that's a critical part for what we are doing at this stage, trying to reach out and provide success for you. So I want to just talk about, again, you're building your alliances, you're building um, that. But prior to that, I want to just talk to you about some of the tools you have in your toolkit. And you may not even know it. And you'll have them here. Um, you'll have them if you transfer on to another school after your, your two years here. But some of these tools that you can pull from that when you're learning our environment, one is going to be the catalog. The college catalog has information for you that you need to know on what's required for your major. Um, you're going to have our student handbook. My office um, is the judicial office on campus. So I'm hoping I don't see anybody there um, this semester. But the student handbook is online for you. Um, and make sure you take a look at it, because it's going to have the resources you need, but it's also going to have our policies and procedures. And as community members here, those policies and procedures are going to be different. Again, and we're going to use the from your ordinary world coming in here. And you're accountable to them, and you need to own that. And so you need to familiarize yourself with that environment. That's, that's on you. And, and, and so that's available. That's a resource for you. Other resources, we talked about Campus Connection. There's tons of information in there. Again, who's your advisor? What do I owe the college? What kind of financial aid am I getting? What courses are going to be offered next spring? That's a resource for you. Other tools and or resources. You're probably going to be working um, with your advisor on a degree audit. We have a software program that, let's say, if I'm an elementary ed major, you know, I'm going to get my associate in arts here at Bismarck State. We're going to plug in the courses you've taken. You're going to declare your major, what degree you're going for. And it's going to tell you what other classes you need so that as you're working with your advisor and picking classes, you're not taking classes you don't need. Your time's valuable, and so is your resources in terms of money. So these are tools that we want you to use um, during your experience here, not only your first semester or your second. Um, the help desk. I mentioned the help desk um, to get things programmed. You guys are phone folks. Get your email. Get um, most of our um, stuff, our catalogs and stuff, are mobile, yep. um, or for mobile devices. We've got computer labs on campus, um, nearly in every building. We have study rooms yep. in every building. If that works for you, take advantage of it. Um, they're there for you. So let's go into meeting some of your alliances here of who you should. These are the offices, right, These that you should be familiar with. Um, so we have, you've been hearing the MAC. The MAC is in the lower level of the student union. So when you go and get your books, you can take a peek in there. And it's our Mystic Advising and Counseling Center. And you can go there for a variety of reasons. You're all assigned an advisor, but if you have a quick question or you can't get a hold of your advisor, stop in at the MAC. They're going to help you with whatever question you have. Some of you are going to be asking about transfer. Some of you are going to be also um, looking for um, internships. Mm -hmm. that, that's another service out of that area, part-time jobs. We have personal counseling. We have career counseling. Again, it's not uncommon. I went around and asking, well, so what's your major? It's not uncommon um, for you to decide after, I don't know, eight weeks here, mm, I'm not going to major in psychology, or I'm not going to major in history. And that office is going to help you explore um, what your options are um, if you need that. Mm -hmm. So take advantage of them. We have another area called our Psych Student Success Center. And this is situated in a unique space on campus. Right between Schaefer Hall and the Jack Science Center. And that's where we have 
most of our tutoring services, free tutoring for all of our students, either peer tutoring from other students or paid uh, professional tutors that we have on staff. And so besides our academic support services with the tutoring, um, you're gonna want to, well, I'm gonna go back to tutoring here. Don't wait until your second exam um, if, if, if you feel you need to go into tutoring. Math is Dan's area, I love it's not math. my strength. And if I were to go back to higher ed and start over, I'm gonna go into the tutoring center. They have open houses, so I can, one, find where it's at, know who my peer tutors are, know what the schedule is, because if those schedules don't meet, we also have online tutoring that we give codes and we'll pay for that. So it's not about, if I know it's not a strength and I wanna get a B or an A, I'm gonna go in there right away, not after the fact. Um, the other services in, in our Psych Student Success Center, we have veteran services. Some of you may be dependents of veterans and it may be applicable to you. And then we also have student accessibility. And so for those, we have students who have um, documented disabilities and you may need adaptive testing or note takers or textbooks in a different format. And so that area is where you're gonna go for those types of services, okay? We have a health center on campus that is located in the armory, which is the building kind of adjacent when you go outside here. And this is really unique because those of you who I heard were going into nursing, you'll probably be part of this in the future. We have our nursing students work with resident doctors through the UND Family Center, and they're up here on Tuesday and Thursday <laughs> afternoons. And so there's information in your folder you got today of the types of services if you're on campus, if you wanna access that there, okay? And then I want to talk about um, these folks. Um, we have a safety and security department. Um, for those of you who moved on campus yesterday, you probably met them because they were getting your parking, um, your parking permits ready for you. So um, these folks are gonna be out assisting you in the next two weeks. And I wanna just take a minute and I wanna give you some tips for parking here our first two weeks. And so parking is really crazy our first two weeks. There are enough spots for everyone on this campus, but with about three, so there's maybe even 4,000 right. people on a given day, because we've got the public that comes up here, we've got high school students and we've got all our classes, We've got a lot of people coming and going. And again, it usually takes two weeks to get into the group. And so my recommendation to you is don't um, leave your house here in Bismarck, Mandan um, 15 minutes before classes start. You want to get here at least 20 minutes, at least 20 minutes. We don't want you late your first day because you're going to get, it, it just, why put the pressure on you? For those of you who live in the halls, um, just, recommending that you walk to classes. Uh, many of our students will drive because you're over here, most of our housing's on one end of campus, classes are on the other. It's gonna be easier to stay in your spot and walk those first two weeks. Um, and I understand you may have a class at this end of campus and then you gotta get to work. We understand that, but just be patient with us. Um, but after two weeks, so they're gonna be around and they're gonna be helping direct traffic and getting you to the right parking spots. So, parking permits. If you're not on campus living, you don't need a parking permit. You can come and park in all lots except the halls, because you need a parking permit. Um, and where it says faculty and staff, there's a couple of spots, not tons, and then like the handicap accessible. So come to campus, it's open parking except for those designated areas. If you're in the halls, you need a parking permit because you need to park in that hall, uh, you know, in the evenings and stuff. So what else do we wanna talk about this? I would like you to put their numbers into your phone. Take your phone out Take and your or phone write out. it down um, so you can you do it may later. Need the, right, you may need these guys um, from maybe something not serious, but if you have a question or see something, I don't know how you're gonna put BSC security, um, so it's 701-224-2700. Dan, repeat that. 701-224-2700. Yep. And again, it could be anything if you're working late in the library and you just need an escort 
to your vehicle, you parked way on the other side of campus. There's a lot of reasons why you may want to give them a call, and uh, we want that to be there for all of you, um, that it's embedded in your phone. And the only other thing you're going to receive, um, just to be aware, you maybe have that in your, your employment or if you're coming from the high school, you get notifications. And so whether the college is closing due to a snowstorm, which believe me, that we don't close unless it's really bad. But it's awesome when it happens. When it happens. Okay. But you'll get notifications from that department. Um, again, you sign up for those on Campus Connection. Um, and so you, you're going to get them. You're going to automatically get them, but you can add more. You're going to get either by voicemail, by text, or by email. And so that you're going to get communication from them throughout um, your time here. Okay? I'm going to quick put a plug in before we move on to facing the challenge. So you're here, um, you know, up to about three to eight weeks, and parents and family members here, um, this is the time when we're going to invite you back to campus because we want you to connect with your student. And so we have a family weekend. It's October 2nd and 3rd. And I want you, um, if your student's here, um, it's in your packet. Give that to your parents. And for those of you who are family members aren't here, make sure to communicate that to them because they're going to want to um, know what's happening um, and how your classes are going. They're going to want to meet some of your instructors, and then we'll have that available October 2nd and 3rd. So you've built your allies, you have your support team, you have your, um, your structures, you know where, the, the, um, where your group is to really provide that support for you. Now you're in that point of the semester where you're really developing a um, structure where you need to face some challenges. And so we're in the middle and you're doing your tests and you're into the groove. So what does it take to have this strong team behind you and you face this major challenge? We're going to take a look at a clip where one of your favorite movies from your childhood, I'm sure, um, where they actually face a challenge together. Teamwork. Uh, mission control. Let's go. Great. Uh, Help me out of this thing. Shh. Don't you get out here. Permission to launch. <laughs> Permission granted. Three, two, one. Reach for the sky. That's right. I'm talking to you. We don't like being blown up, Sid. From now on, you must take good care of your toys. We toys can see everything. We did it! We did it! Celebration dance. Yes. <laughs> so you've done your test. You've done. You're in the middle of the semester. You're feeling pretty good about yourself. You have your support team, and you've been successful. Um, what was the evil kid's name in that movie? Sid. Sid. Everyone remembers Sid. You're going to have Sids attacking you throughout the semester, and you've got your support team. It's all good. But during this time, you know, that's one of the things. You're starting to experience these big changes at BSC, and you're putting yourself in this position where, you know, you're, you're feeling full of life. You're building up confidence. Of course, what happens when you build up too much confidence? Uh, sometimes you're overconfident. So you're accepting the, the consequences of this new environment. You're feeling really good about everything. And really, at this point in the semester, we're talking about, you know, from the midpoint all the way through until about the uh, last quarter of the semester, you know, you're doing your tests, you're doing your papers, you have a system in place, you've given a number of speeches at this point in the semester, um, you have done your labs, and you've written up your lab reports. All of that's going well. And then at this point in the semester, you start thinking about next semester. You're working with your, your team, They're your advisors. They're working outside of campus, I'm sure. And that's where, you know, you start seeing some of the changes. It's at this time in the semester when the weather starts changing. You know, and I've taught many years in that first hard frost, um, when it gets really cold that first time, so many students get out to their car, turn it over, and it's dead, right? The battery's dead. And so... It'll happen. It'll happen to some of you. But again, having that structure in place, you know what to do at this stage in the game. So there's extra pressures in play at this, at this moment. And that's what we need to keep in mind is that you do have the support structure around you. And we know that. And so here's what we're doing at this time. Um, just like Woody, I was going to say, just like Woody, he elicited help from his friends. Even though those other toys were scary, you're going to need to ask for help. He asked for help. And we actually do tons of outreach. 
And what we're asking you, if you take anything from today's orientation, is to think about when you come to that point, just look around. You're going to see tons of outreach, and we're asking you to accept that. And so you're going to see it with our programming that's happening. We may have health fairs. Those are intentional because we want you not only to be physically healthy, we want you to be mentally healthy. We know that's going to be important at that time. You're going to have your, we're going to be handing cookies out to say, go, it's advising, and go and check out your advisor. We're going to have emails out to you and, and whether, I don't know, I'm wondering what else. We're going to have stress management. Sometimes we have massages come up here through um, some programming that we do with some allied health careers. So look for those. Um, you, you may not, if you, if you don't know about the cycle here, there'll be tons of that out there. Those challenges are gonna be unique to you. And so look for them, we're there. And that's, you know, you have your support team because here's what's gonna happen and our next stage in the journey is you hit that wall. And it most likely will happen to all of you at some point in the semester. So we're gonna take a look at a clip where the hero of this story um, hits a very dramatic, terrible time where they actually lose their mentor. So let's take a look at this one. I'm going to try not to cry myself. I've been waiting for you, Obi-Wan. We meet again. Is the ship all right? Seems okay if we can get to it. Just hope the old man got the tractor beam out of commission. How's the chance go? Ben? No! Come on! Come on! Run, Luke, run! Okay, hit it! Of course, who's that hero, the blonde, sulking guy there? What's his name? Luke Skywalker. Of course, the next movie's coming out this fall, this winter. Can't wait. So at this stage, and you know, everything's lost, right? I mean, it's a very deep, um, tough time in the semester. You know, there's huge pressures. There's new challenges. Um, there's a need for you to really rededicate yourself. And all of this is a very real part of the semester. And it happens, and that's why we're talking about it. It will happen. And so loved ones that are here, uh, just understand that this is a natural phase of the, the flow of the semester. And your, your students are going to need extra support at this time. And so let's, it's not a secret, we'll let you know, um, when would you think this is happening? In the fall, this happens around Thanksgiving break. We have a lot of students who go home for Thanksgiving, not a lot, but they don't come back. Because they hit this wall and just say, you know, mm -hmm. I'm not coming back. And we don't want you to do that. So if you know you're going through that, um, you're going to get through this, and you, again, ask for help. In the spring semester, that falls around the Easter time when we hit the wall. Yep. And I guess if we want to emphasize is you're not alone. Most students are feeling this at one point or another. You're tired. We know you're tired. You've been here, um, and you're just going, can I make it? I mean, I've got finals. I've got work. I've got um, a social life. Um, is it worth it? And yes, it is. That Black Friday, right? Everyone wants you to work extra hours and you're still trying to study. So it's a very real phenomenon. So again, calling out um, loved ones as you uh, support your students, keep this in mind. Um, give them extra reassurance. Care packages, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a pretty cool thing. So you can send some care packages, get some extra chocolate chip cookies out there. Um, the important thing is you're not alone. A lot of people are going through it at the same time and understand that. So really own that. If you're in this journey, you're, the, you're your own hero. Understand that this is a natural part. It happens in all the stories, and it happens as a student at college as well. So as you uh, sort of rededicate yourself, the reason you know, that you do that and you want to focus on is, of course, the final stage, which is the victory part of it. And so as you're getting through this, keep in mind why you're here today. Classes will begin tomorrow for some of you, uh, Wednesday for the rest of you. You know what, why are you starting out on this journey? It's to succeed and be success, uh, to get to the end of the semester, this victory. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the clip of all of our, our heroes as they go through that victory cycle. To Mr. 
Harry Potter for pure love and outstanding courage. 60 points. Assuming that my calculations are correct, I believe that a change of decoration is in order. Gryffindor wins the House Cup. Now come the days of the king. My friends, you bow to no one. Look out! You're all clear, kid! Now let's blow this thing and go home! So the victory montage, right? That's what all of you are going to go through. Yes, we may not have an auditorium full of people clapping for you as you find, you know, do your final paper. Um, we won't all bow down to you at the end. But if you ask me, if you see me in December, maybe you could talk me into it because I might do that. Um, but ultimately, why are you on this journey? It's to be successful. Again, you wouldn't do this just to, you know, just for no reason, right? You want the success, and so. You know, at this level in the journey, you're really developing a new mastery, and that's the, that's the key. You know, again, here's the key. All the way through that part of the semester, you have winter break, you get to go home, you get to celebrate, but guess what? What happens afterwards? It starts over again. And so you have that same cycle. Again, we want you to take today, you can apply it to your second semester. You can apply this model also to your higher ed career here, and if you transfer on, um, to that. It's not, we don't want it to be a surprise. If you know what to expect, you know what the resources are, um, we're here to help you. Yeah. And that's why, exactly, that's why we're doing this. It's, it's for you to uh, really understand this journey um, in, in light of, you know, the stories of the, the of the heroes and such. Um, if you understand where you're at in that part of the journey, you can own it and you know what's going to happen next. I mean, it's just a natural flow. And it's, it, it, our hope is to help you through that process, um, that self-awareness that's so important for you to understand, you know, how each stage leads to the next stage. And we know we um, share with your successes, and we know what some of you go through, um, your work and, and the schedules you have, and what you juggle to um, go to school and get your degree, that actually at that graduation you are our, our heroes at, at BSC. So... We are going to transition into our next um, part of today's session, and he's going to get you moving around because we know you've been sitting for a while. Um, we have a presenter here. We're excited to have him here. He was actually at Lake Region yesterday, um, State College, and he is going to continue a discussion with you of what you can expect here on your journey. So please help me welcome Jay Zar. Jay Zar. Hey. Yay.